Hello there, and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy, the show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors, and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's tutorial, I want to show you how we can take an average winter image and turn it into something special with the tools available in Luminar Neo. It's going to be a lot of fun, so make sure that you join me. If you want to get the sample files, you just need to jump into the description of the video and follow the link there. That will bring you into our Dropbox account and you can download all the files that come with this episode. Once you download and unzip the files, you will see that you will get the sample image, set of LUTs, overlays and skies. All you need to do at this point is just to import the sample image into the application and we can start. Now, before we're going to do that, I want to quickly mention that this episode is powered by our Luminar Neo Winter Bundle. This bundle is part of our four season series and it introduced over 860 new winter elements to power up your Luminar Neo tools. For a little fee, you will get extra high definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, frames, LUTs and presets to transform your winter images with just a few clicks. To get the best possible price, follow the link in the description of this video or to learn more about it, visit our website cleverphotographer.com slash luminar. So that is all out of the way and we can start with the edit. As you can see, we are already in Luminar Neo and we are starting in a catalog module. We are looking at the sample file, the file we're going to be working on today, and let's just quickly look at it. It's a lovely capture with some snow, ice over the river, a lamppost, but in overall it's a little bit flat. There is no texture in the sky, there is no glow in these lamps, and in overall there is not really much happening here. Now the composition is quite decent, we have some nice leading line and lovely depth, but there is so much more we can do with this image. So to take it to another level, we're going to just select it and then move it into edit module by clicking on the edit on the top of our screen or using E on our keyboard. So the first thing we're going to do is to replace the sky. I would like to bring more warmth and more texture into it. For this, we're going to go into our main toolbar, navigate towards the creative section and open the sky AI tool. Here, click on the sky selection button. And then in your gray drop down box, make sure you select all skies. After that, scroll all the way down until you see the plus sign. Click on it and that will open a new window. Navigate towards your sample files and inside you will see a folder called sky. Open it and just select the one sky that is available there and click on open. It will take a few seconds, it will scan the image and then it will replace the sky for us. Now it did pretty decent job replacing the sky, but I can see a little bit of glow around the trees, so we need to adjust that. To do that, we need to go into our mask refinement. So we go into our main toolbar, then we make the sky AI tool more visible and open the mask refinement. Here, let's start by increasing the global adjustment and see if that is going to help. And actually it did pretty decent job replacing most of the glow. Let's quickly check when I reset it. You can see that we had the white glow around the trees and when we increase the global slider, it pretty much disappeared. To top it off, we can also add some fixed details adjustments by just increasing the fixed details slider. Now, if you want to see a full tutorial on how to use the Sky AI tool, 
we have it available on our YouTube channel and I will make sure I link it in a corner of your screen now. So we are done with the masking of the sky. Now we can close the mask refinement and to finish it off, we're gonna go inside of the scene relighting and just play around with the relight strength and relight saturation. So let's increase the relight strength somewhere around here. And you can see while I'm increasing it, we also getting some nice pink and golden color into the snow and everything is matching better together. Let me show you before we had it really white and it didn't match at all together. And when we increase it, it's starting to look much better. So I think somewhere around 60 is a good number. We can also play around with the relight saturation just a little bit, maybe somewhere around 40. Once we're done here, we are done with the scene relight. We are done with the masking. Let's quickly check the before and after, and we already looking much better, but we are not finished at all. Let's close the sky AI to apply to the image and we're going to continue. The next thing I want to do is to add glow into these lamps. For this, we're going to use simple overlay. We're going to go into our layers panel, click on a plus sign here. And after that, click on load image. Once again, navigate towards your sample files, open the overlays folder and select the spotlight lantern. Once you finish, just click on open and it will be added into your my images library. Once it's there, simply click on it and it will be added on our image. So now we have the original image and we have the new spotlight here. You can see that it's selected because it has the blue frame around it and it also has the blue frame on it on our image. You can see when I hover over it, the mouse changes into this hand and now I can just by clicking and dragging it around, adjust its position. When I navigate towards the corner of the overlay, you will see that my mouse changes again and now I can adjust the size of the overlay. So let's do that. And let's start by placing the glow in this lantern here or lamp post here. So somewhere around here is looking good, maybe a little bit bigger. And once I am happy with its position, I'm going to turn my attention towards the layers properties. In the layers properties, I want to increase the opacity to 100. And now I want to remove the black background. To do that, I need to click on the blend modes drop down box and change it from normal into the screen. And as you can see, it's done. Now I can still adjust its size. And once I'm happy, I can just hit enter. Now, what we want to do is we want to do the same for the rest of the lamps here. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Now we don't need to import it again. All we need to do is to right click on the spotlight and select duplicate layer. So we are still here in the layers panel and we are just duplicating the layer with the spotlight. Now we have another layer here and we can just adjust its position. Now we need to make it a little smaller and we will also have to zoom in for this. Now you can do that by using command or control plus, or you can use the little shortcut at the bottom of your screen where you just click and select how much you want to zoom in. So let's start with 200. That's about right. And now I can adjust the position and the size of our new light. Let's have a look. Maybe something like this looks quite good. Maybe a little bit bigger. So maybe somewhere around here and that's it. Place it more inside. And once I'm happy with this, once again, we're going to duplicate it from our layers panel. So right click on it and select duplicate layer. Now we can position it towards the smaller lamps right here. Again, we need to zoom in a little closer and let's just navigate there. So we have uh, three more lamps to do. So let's make it a little smaller again, somewhere around here. And once we are done with this one, we need two more. So back to our layers panel and let's duplicate it again. And one more time. So we don't have to do it over and over. Let's just adjust its position again, make it a little smaller somewhere around here and then select the previous one again, adjust the position size and place it over the little lamp here. Let's have a look somewhere around here, here, 
and this one maybe just a little bit bigger around here. Once we're done, we want to check what we're doing. So let's zoom out. You can do that by using Command-0, or you can hold your spacebar and click. Let's just hit Enter, and let's have a look at the globe. So we're already looking so much better. Let's check the before and after. So we have changed the sky. We have added glow into these lampposts. And now we are ready to continue. Now in the next step, I would like to add a snow to the image. For this, we're going to be using again layers panel. So let's go back there, click on the plus sign and click on load image. Navigate towards your sample files again. So let's have a look here and then open again the overlays folder. Now you will see there is a five snows here. You are more than welcome to key these overlays and use them on your future projects. For this sample file, we are just going to use the one. So I'm looking for really light snow. So I want to select the number five and click on open. It takes a second and it appears in our library here, select it and apply it to our image. Once it's there, we're not going to transform it. We're going to go straight into the layer properties and we're going to use one of the image mapping options. What we're looking for is the fill. We want to fill the image with the snow. So click on it. That will take the snow, stretch it across the image and that's it. The next thing we want to do is to go into our opacity slider and increase it to 100%. Just like with the spotlight, you now want to change the blend mode from normal into the screen. And there you have it. We have a snow. Now the snow is a little bit too wide compared to the rest of the image. You can see that the rest of the image has this kind of yellow warm tone. So to adjust it, we just want to make sure that we still have our snow layer selected. And then we're going to move into the develop tool on our main toolbar. Open it and then open the color section there. We can close the light and in the color section, very gently, just increase the temperature towards the warm. So let's have a look. Just maybe somewhere around four is enough. Let me show you before and after. And you can see how we're getting a little bit of warmth on the snow and it's matching a little bit better together. So I think let's have a look at it four. And if we want, we can add a little bit of tint as well, maybe just somewhere around two. Once we finish with this, we can close the develop tool and we are done. So now we have a new sky. We have a light in our lampposts and we have a snow. Now, the next thing I want to do before applying the effects in Luminar Neo is to merge everything together. Now, at the point of recording of this video, there is no way to do that inside of the application. And the only way to do this is to export the image in the highest possible quality and then bring it back when all the layers are merged together. So that's what we're going to do. So let's just hit enter to come out of the layer setup, then right click on the image and click on export. Once we are in the export, you want to navigate where you want to save your files. So I'm going to go back again into the sample file folder. We're going to name it. We're going to call it winter edit. And then in the image setting, in the export setting, I want you to make sure that your sharpening is on none. Then resize, keep it on original. sRGB is fine, but in a format, we want to turn it into TIFF. 300 pixels on inch is fine no compression, and in a depth, you can leave it on 16 bits. You want to make sure your save transparency is unchecked. And once you finish, you just click on save. Now Luminar Neo is going to export the image for us. And then we go into the catalog module, import it and continue from there. So we are in the catalog module. We have our winter edit image here. So let's just move it directly into edit module. And we're going to continue there. Now, just to double check, when I look at the layers panel, you can see that all the layers disappear and they are now merged together in the file. Now, anytime I use layers panel and add the new elements into the image, I like to create additional layer of effect on top of it to merge it all together. The easiest way to do this is to use the mood tool and LUTs. So let's go straight into our main toolbar, into the creative section, and go into the mood tool. Click on it to open it. 
and then click on the gray drop down box with the choose LUT. Here again, click on add custom LUT file and again navigate towards our sample files. Here open the LUTs file and just select all three of them and click on add. These LUTs are coming from our winter bundle and once again, you more than welcome to keep them and use them in the future. For us, we need to go back to our mood tool. Once again, click on choose LUT and this time navigate towards the custom LUT folder. Here we have a three options. So let's start with the number one and let's just increase the amount to see what it does. It doesn't really fit this image. So let's go back and select the LUT number two, which is a little bit better. And let's also check the number three. I think the three is maybe a little bit too washed out. So let's stick with the number two. Now, before we leave the tool, we can play around with the amount and see what we prefer. I think maybe just somewhere around 35 is good. We can also adjust the contrast if we want and the saturation. So I think somewhere around eight and it's looking all good. Let's have a look at the before and after and everything is just nicely working together. Now we are done with the tool. So just close it and apply it to the image. So what are some of the additional things we could use here? So for example, we could go into the mystical tool, open it, and then increase the amount to get a little bit of the fairy tale glow. Once we happy, somewhere around 30, we can again close it. I think it would be also nice to get a little bit of the vignette to add more attention into this part of the image. So for this again, back into the main toolbar, back to the essential section and open the vignette tool. Here, adjust the amount until you like it. I think somewhere around minus 52, minus 44 is about right. And we can also click on choose subject and now just click to select the center of the actual vignette. So I think somewhere around here is working quite well. Once we happy, again, close it and apply it. And to finish it off, let's add a little bit of haze over the overall scene just to make it even more cinematic. So for this, we need to go back to our creative section, head into the atmosphere AI and in the atmosphere AI, change the mode from fog into the something like layered fog or haze. Let's start with the haze and then increase the amount. Now you will see we have the fog coming from behind over the forest here. It's looking quite nice. Let's see somewhere around here. We can also adjust the depth if we want to. So the fog will be coming more from the bottom. I think just somewhere around 40 and 25 is looking good. If we would want to, we could play around with the lightness to make it a little bit darker. And actually looking at it, I think we just leave it on 100%. Let's have a look at the before and after. And I think it's a little bit too strong. So let's bring the amount down to maybe 30 and a depth to somewhere around 20. We just want something that will make it a little bit more cinematic but not overdo it. Again, let's have a look at the before and after. And I think that is looking good. Once we finish, we can close the atmosphere AI and we are done. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudphotographer.com slash luminargift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Yeah.